So Matt's going to be my victim, I mean, uh, helper. He's, he is all over me. Hello everyone and welcome back to episode two of this mini karting series. We are here at Team Sport Reading and alongside me is none other than legend Jack Aitken, Renault F1 test driver, once again in your default karting suit. I love it. How are you? Staying on WTF1 brand here. It's, we uh, force yeah. you every time, don't we? Yes. We really do. But today we're going to find out how to get better at karting. So I'm going to be listening a lot to your advice today, Jack. Uh, you've got a lot in, in that brain of yours to, to help me get better, right? Um, maybe, we'll see. We'll and see. you guys at home, of course, as well. You've probably clicked on this video hoping for some tips. So let's get straight into it. We have six karting tips for you today, and what better way to give you this advice than in the carts themselves? These six areas are racing line, braking, engine, steering, fears, and racecraft. Let's dive straight in to help you and me improve at karting. Okay, here we go then. Racing line. I feel like that's something that I kind of know quite a lot about. Matt is going to be our lovely demonstrator, hopefully, if he gets a half decent line. So, basics are, you want to draw as straight a line as possible. That's for two reasons. Uh, one, to shorten the distance through the corner. And then uh, two, to carry as much speed as possible. So in this hairpin, start on the right, clip this apex, end up on the right again. It's all about giving yourself the best opportunity into the next corner, so you want to take it wide. Wait, wide, because you know it's a hairpin coming up, so you want to get the best angle in, so you can slingshot out of the corner. Compensate for the corner that's going to come next. Make sure that you're prepared for it. So yeah, like here, you don't want to end up all the way over to the left, like Matt, because then you've got to come all the way back for that next corner. Jack is probably absolutely roasting me right now for my racing lines. High speed corners. You have to round off the line a little bit more because you're carrying a lot more speed. Whereas these short, sharp corners, you can afford to, uh, to be a bit more aggressive with it. Take a slightly tighter line. I think in karting, sometimes the uh, racing line is very different to what you would imagine uh, in racing games, for example, when you see that green line that the game is helping you. Because sometimes, like downstairs, for example, there are grippier lines which wouldn't be the most optimum when it comes to angle, but optimum with the grip levels. Okay, next up we have braking. And I think this is something that I really do struggle with, is, is knowing how much to press the brake pedal in carts, because it's, it's, <laughs> they're very different to uh, race cars. Like for example, that corner I just went through, you want to lock up the rears a lot more uh, and try and rotate the car. Anyone who's been to a cart track probably will know that brakes are very sensitive on these things, mainly because they're very light, so there's not a lot of weight on those wheels, so it's very easy to lock up. But um, you can use that to your advantage, advantage in certain situations. But, you know, as a rule of thumb, you want to be just, uh, just below the point where the rear tires are going to start locking and screeching. You can tell that they're locking because of the noise, listen, that. And uh, also, you can feel the rear go a bit light and a bit squirrely. Now we're going to watch Matt into this hairpin here. So you see there, he kicks the rear out to try and help the rotation. And he's probably going to do it here again. Yep, there you go. So that's good to an extent, because it will get you around the corner quicker. But it is going to make the car bog down a little bit. So you have to choose where you do that kind of technique. And, um, yeah. In some cases, there, I didn't even touch the brake. You just use the grip of the car to slow you down as it slides. Matt's definitely opting for the, uh, shall we say, more dramatic style here. That was nice. I enjoyed that. That was lovely, actually. Well done, Matt. And oh, that's not too bad either. I'm on, I'm on a pretty decent lap here. It's not, it's not too bad for him. You know, it does work a lot of the time, so he can get away with that. Oh, a bit greedy on the exit. Jesus! Very wide there, Matt. What are you doing? Oh no, Jack's still behind me. You know, you just 
Just one day I want to look behind and be like, oh, I've actually gained some time on Jack. No, still up my chuff. What an absolutely horrendous human being Jack Aitken is. Just give me a chance, man. So Jack, we're sat in our beautiful carts and one of the things you mentioned to me about, which maybe not a lot of people know, is actually knowing what you're sat in and what engine you have, right? Yeah, most people don't realise that carts have four wheels, steering wheel and an engine. <laughs> you are something else. But the engine is the important part, right? Yes, it is. So these have got fairly uh, common engines in them for, for a rental cart, so they're quite a good example. It's not um, got a huge abundance of power compared to sort of uh, a Formula One car, for example, which is maybe, <laughs> maybe what I'm more used to, but um, the key thing is to keep up momentum, like you say. And uh, you mentioned to me off camera about rev range. You know, what, what exactly does that mean to someone, like keeping it in the rev range? Yeah, so the, the rev range, just I'm just talking about sort of that, that sweet spot in the engine where you will actually get some, some good acceleration. And uh, obviously if you drop below that range because your speed's too low or you've bogged through the corner because you're sliding, um, it then is very hard work for the engine to pick back up again. So yeah, it's just basically keeping above that, that sort of threshold. So you mentioned about not scrubbing the time off by sliding and whatnot. Is there anything that you can do with your acceleration to make sure that you stay in that rev range? because I don't do that very often. I just feel it going. No, I, I didn't oh. notice that when I was behind you. Um, <laughs> it was Thanks. Yeah, I was, on the, I was on the mic just going, yeah, he's going to be rinsing me for that corner. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so when I'm behind you, it was purely because I was maybe being a little bit more conservative on the entries, sliding a bit less, and that meant I could get on the power half a second earlier than you, and suddenly I'm right on your bumper. Yeah. So it makes a big difference. Being... Oh, there's Jack. Yeah, a little, little love tap. <laughs> <laughs> Intriguing stuff. Okay, now it's time to have a tutorial in steering. I think one of the first things to point out is the smoother in general you can be with the line of the cart, the better. It's all about the flick of the wrist. I don't know, I don't, I really, steering is one thing I, I'm not sure if I do too much of or too little of. Now the reason I stress line is because to get a smooth line doesn't always mean smooth steering as you can see there. I feel like when I watch Jack karting, it doesn't look like he turns the steering wheel like, at all. It's, it's mental. He, he genuinely puts in about two degrees of steering angle and he's 20 years faster than me. He's gonna bump me out, there it is. Bumps me up the bloody hill again. Oh my God. It's just about buying the minimum amount of steering possible to, uh, to get the rotation that you want to so hear. You see, I didn't actually move the steering to the right at all to get in there. And that's just coming from the brake and the rear sliding. Here as well, you see, actually kept the steering quite straight through that whole section and the rear is just moving around me. So you're almost wanting to use it a bit like a pendulum. We're going to chat about fears now, Jack, and we're actually at a good part of the circuit where I'm actually rather scared of this. It is Slippery McGee, I'm going to call it. Yeah. It is honestly one of the most frightening corners I've ever been. Not, not for I'm going to crash, but just frightening in terms of I'm losing time. Yeah, you can actually see the seconds falling away, can't you? Cool. Thanks yeah. so much for bringing up. But fears in general for you and for novices, I suppose, maybe you know, first timers, what is it that potentially restricts them from going karting, would you say? Crashing is, is the big one. Yeah. Because um, you feel quite vulnerable in a cart, don't you? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, the first time they get in, they say, you know, there's no seat belts, there's nothing yeah. holding me in. It's, it's a bit of an odd situation, but I think the key thing there is just to be, um, sort of accept that actually the likelihood of a, of a crash is quite small. And even when you do, Safety systems in place are very good these days. Damn, it feels like being properly briefed. Though, I know. Kai, it's because I've heard so many briefings and <laughs> just like bang, yeah. bang, bang. But, Don't be the dark car. But, <laughs> but, but it's true. So, you know, um, we have had accidents in the past that have had bad consequences, yeah. but then they, they've learned from that and brought in safer carts, safer equipment. So, you know, it's all, it's all pretty good on that side nowadays. Especially when you're, you're going around a track like this where we're not going huge speeds and it's something that definitely a novice, you know, if you're watching and you've never been karting before, would you recommend it, Jack? 
I would recommend it, yes. It's not particularly dangerous, but yeah, it's, it's something that can hold people back. And for me, you know, going in a lot faster carts, I do feel quite scared of crashing. But for this, the, these kind of circuits, it's pretty safe and pretty sound, isn't it? Yeah, and you, you'll get used to it very quickly is the other thing. Like the speed at first might feel like a lot, but do a few more laps and actually the brain's very good at adapting to that kind of thing. So, you know, just in, try and enjoy it. And um, the thing you have to be scared about is getting humiliated by, by your you. friends. <laughs> and you can actually wear a bib. They have like rookie bibs, don't they? You know, if it makes you feel more comfortable. Yeah, it's all people good. give you a yeah. wide berth. Anyway, there you go. Don't be scared of karting. Right, me and Mr. Aitken are gonna have a little ding-dong battle now. So let's see how this goes. So Matt's gonna be my victim, I mean, uh, helper here. He's, he is all over me. First thing you've done is you've caught him. Now, it's about waiting for the next opportunity. There's no opportunity here. And you can see he's covering lines here. He's doing the classic thing, taking the inside. We're gonna go up the outside, try and dummy him into going too hard. And you see, we can try and get the cut back. It hasn't quite worked there. We're gonna try it again, going up the hill. And you see, I get a better exit and have the inside for the next corner. Oh, hold on though. Gallagher comes back. Oh no, he's covering the inside. Oh, he, got, he just comes straight over, cuts me off. The inside is everything in racing. Oh, he hits the wall. Oh, a little bit of contact. The stewards will be looking at that one. I know that you see moves around the outside quite often on TV. But that is usually because it's a f***ing worldy of a move. It's good from Gallagher, but it's better from Aitken because he's a professional racing driver and I'm just an amateur carter. Or it's because the guy on the inside has made a mistake. So now I'm going to slow down. I'm going to let Matt take the outside. He's teasing me. He's teasing Gallagher. And there is nothing he can do. I'm letting him come up beside me and he's, he's locked out. All I have to do is keep him right there on my rear quarter and he can't do anything. So I'm going like half the speed that I would be normally. Tires are gone. He's got way more power, way more traction than me. He's right there on the outside. He's even passed me on the way into the corner. Show him the door. He's still covering me off. He's just a very light man. I reckon it's all down to weight. Oh, and he goes, tries to go around the outside. Please. But all I'm gonna do is show him the wall. I'm gonna take the outside line, try and get a slingshot. So we're gonna let him let him pass now and we're going to try again and see if he's picked up anything you know that's a high speed corner so it's going to be tough to overtake but we forced him into a mistake we're side by side the next corner is a left hander we spooked him out a bit there so actually we can go around the outside <laughs> my life just flashed before me i was like jack aiken please give me space going into that corner so if i make a mistake here go wide give him the Give him that. This is it. I have to just defend for one lap against Jack Aitken. Can I do it? So now imagine we've just started the race and actually Matt is faster than me. So he's, I've got one lap maybe before he gets away. He's making mistakes and he's defending and that's making him slower. It's bringing him down to my level. Now you can see, you can just try and force them into driving the non-optimal line. Oh my goodness mate, he's gonna have me. I'm gonna cover the inside. Giving them taps here and there, and it allows you to stay with them when you shouldn't. Come on, cut! And then one time, you're gonna get a good enough run. Bang. Oh, he's got me! You've got the inside from the next corner, make it count. And suddenly, you've got track position. But he can go a bit wide, but I'm not gonna get the momentum and Aiken is gonna win the race. Okay, so we are done here at Team Sport Reading for episode two of finding out how to be a better carter. Jack, if you could pick one tip out of the ones we've gone through today to improve, to maybe make the biggest improvement, what would it be? Probably a uh, racing line, I think that's, you know, it's a fundamental one and one that people see as basic, but actually everyone can, can learn something from it and look a bit more into the details of. Yep, okay, so next time we're going to be finding out if weight really does matter. We're going to be putting some serious beef onto you, Jack, and we're, we're going to make you the same weight as me, and if you still put really, really good lap times in, I have no excuse at all. How do you think you're going to do? 
I'm, yeah, if that happens, you're, I'm taking your I'm not carting experts, that's fine. Please don't take my job. No, but... But no, how, do, just... how do you think? <laughs> let, let's look to episode three. How do you think that will actually unfold? Do you think it will change much? I think that we will see an effect, especially with these hills. Um, you know, I've been on the beneficiary side of things but when it comes to weight, so I'm not really looking forward to this, but uh, <laughs> I think we'll see a difference, yeah. Jack Aitken exposed. Get ready for the final episode. I'm Matt. This is Jack with WTF1. Goodbye! <laughs>